Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. On this week's program, we talk with Barb Downey, a rancher from Muncie County, and she has wrapped up her year as president of the Kansas Livestock Association. We'll also have features from Kansas Soybean Commission and the Kansas Department of Agriculture and our weekly updates from the Kansas Livestock Association as well as the markets from Paragon Ag Advisors. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org. And the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat online at kswheat.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, in what's called a win for workers, Democrats in the House of Representatives say they reached an agreement with the Trump administration to move the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement forward. President Trump says the agreement is good for everybody farmers, manufacturers, energy, as well as unions. He said the USMCA has tremendous support. Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue said the agreement improves virtually every component of its predecessor that was the North American Free Trade Agreement. Perdue said the House and Senate now needs to work diligently to pass USMCA by Christmas. Well, the Kansas Department of Agriculture has announced that Chief Engineer David Barfield will be retiring from his position at the Division of Water Resources effective March 6th of next year. Barfield has been with DWR for 35 years and served as Chief Engineer since June of 2007. He's led the DWR in its efforts to serve water users in the state within the framework of Kansas law. That includes administration of more than 30,000 active water rights and four interstate water compact and also the state's program regulating dams and other water structures. Barfield led Kansas through decades of effort to interstate issues, including a couple of Supreme Court litigation and years of negotiations to reach agreements with Nebraska and Colorado to ensure that Kansas received its share of waters from the Republican River. Now, similarly, he led negotiations of numerous implementation agreements that were related to the Kansas Compact with Colorado on the Arkansas River and in reaching a water rights settlement agreement with the Kickapoo Tribe to help that tribe develop and secure a water supply for its needs. And after serving as president of the National Farmers Union for over a decade, Roger Johnson has announced that he does not intend to seek re-election again next year. His current term will end when the organization holds their annual convention in March. At that point, an election for his successor will be held. During his 11-year-long tenure, he led many efforts fighting corporate consolidation in the world of agriculture, as well as helping farmers adapt and mitigate climate change and developing fair international trade agreements, they say, and as well providing information and resources to rural communities that are struggling with mounting stress and opioid misuse, and also ensuring that economic and social viability of family farm agriculture. Now, prior to his lending, the family farm organization, he served as the North Dakota Agriculture Commissioner. Now, you can find out more on these and other stories at agview.net. We'll be back after these messages. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com 
That's OHLDEseed.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future at KansasCorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas Corn Farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. And joining us now is Barb Downey, who is a Wapunsi County rancher and uh, just wrapping up her time as president of the Kansas Livestock Association. We're here at their meeting in Wichita. And uh, Barb, I think we talked about a year ago with anticipation. And uh, uh, this is usually one of the quickest years, a time to lead uh, the state's largest livestock organization. Yeah, you know, anytime you're busy, it just goes really fast. And this organization, like you said, it being so large, 5,600 of my fellow cattle producers. Um, we have an incredible organization here that relies very heavily on volunteer leadership, but also a really good professional staff. And together, I think we do a really good job for, for producers. Let's talk about uh, this past year. Uh, go back, uh, you know, the end of uh, uh, 2018 and now uh, this whole process. Uh, uh, a lot of times we always want to give credit or blame for the cattle market, but there, there's definitely been one challenge after the other after the other. Uh, and this, this will probably go down as, as the year of, of the challenge for, for, for the industry. I have not met a cattleman yet that doesn't want to just see 2019 out the door. We started with, uh, when, when we first started this year, personally on our ranch, we were still in record-breaking drought. And then the faucets turned on, and they didn't seem to ever turn off. And, and we faced a winter, uh, cattlemen in Kansas faced a winter with um, un, almost unprecedented mud and cold temperatures and relentless conditions. Uh, the good news was we broke our drought, uh, and that problem uh, solved itself. Uh, production was good for both forages and grains this year, and we came into the fall in pretty darn good shape. Then, of course, we, we had the fire at the Tyson plant uh, that, that threw our markets um, into what appeared to be chaos, but it was actually with the uh, advantage of a little bit of distance in hindsight, those markets reacted exactly how they should have and, and, and served to pull us through what was really a tough time and out the other side. Being on the ranch is sometimes it, uh, uh, it it's it's also not only healing to kind of get away from the hustle and bustle uh, of of everything. Uh, and I, I, I say that saying you spent an awful lot of time in D.C. this past year fighting for a number of issues. It is really important. Uh, we we get involved in our own little world and our operations, and we don't realize sometimes what's going on, and we maybe don't appreciate the ramifications for how we or the next generation might do business. So it becomes important that when you're involved with these organizations that you step up and you do your part. And part of that is DC, part of it's Topeka, part of it's with your local government organizations. Barb Downey, who is a Muncie County rancher and uh, the outgoing president of the KLA, is joining us. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more in just a moment. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum. Growers working together. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. GrassandGrain.com and AgView.net, serving the beef belt and western corn belt with reliable and relevant agriculture information. AgView.net. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. 
Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. And our guest is Barb Downey, a Wabansi County rancher and now past president of the Kansas Livestock Association. And Barb, we talked about you know the challenges not only on the ranch, the challenges in dealing with policy. Uh, but one of the good things, the shining example in, the, in this industry has been one that, that has had a lot of discussion, and that is trying to find not only the value, but trying to find really where we are with the beef checkoff. The beef checkoff, I think, is one of our most misunderstood programs, what it can and what it can't do. But independent of that, I think we are seeing the results of literally years of effort on, uh, by the checkoff on behalf of all beef producers. We are seeing beef demand truly increase. We are watching our exports around the world for a high quality product contribute 300 plus dollars to each of our bottom line uh, for each, each head of cattle processed. Uh, we are starting to see the benefits. Does change happen overnight? No. It's a long, steady process with many facets. There's foundational research that has been done with our checkoff dollars that assures uh, consumers that protein is part of a healthy diet, uh, that it's necessary, that it, it can be part of a weight loss diet. There was some really good research done that, that showed that a high protein diet in, uh, involving beef up to six ounces a day was actually as effective at controlling your blood pressure as the, the classic diet that, that cardiologists always want to prescribe. And of course, for you and me, much easier to stick to. The, um, so better able to affect our health. That kind of foundational research has, has led to consumers' increased acceptance and demand for beef, and that's been really good for all of us. Well, there's, there's been a lot of kind of who does what, and, and today is not the day for that conversation. But wanted to give you the opportunity because, uh, there, especially in Kansas, there are two distinctions, KLA, the Kansas Beef Council, while you may be kind of housed in the sa under the same roof, it'd be like a family of, you know, almost kind of cousins together. I mean, yeah, you, you know each other, uh, but, but, you know, one doesn't tell the other one what to do. I'm a checkoff payer, I'm a producer, I've been involved with the Beef Council for a number of years, and I have the same concerns as every other producer out there does. Are they using my dollars wisely? Are they using them in the way that the act and order prescribes? And having been on the inside of this process for many years, I can say without hesitation, yes. So I'd, I'd like to put that one to bed. What I really want to do is go forward with what we do so well, and that is promoting beef selling its positive attributes, and bringing our consumers back to the dinner table for another good steak. It is, I tell you. One of the biggest things that I, you know, at, look at this, trying to get to that four ounces because it tastes so good, but uh, we appreciate the effort and the effort that the cattlemen are doing to, to meet the marketplace. So, and again, thanks for your time. And, and uh, is there one thing that sticks out in your mind, though, of all the things that you experienced this year in the helm that you want to uh, maybe reflect and share on? I would say that you know the, the helm is accurate, but it is truly a team effort. It is all of us doing what each one does well, coming together in a coordinated way, and that's the way it works. We need everybody to be involved. All right. Barb Downey, Wabunsee County Rancher, now former president, past president, if you want to use, for the Kansas Livestock Association has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. 
The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if you're held liable in any type of accident, the judgment can claim your assets? Please give me a call so we can discuss 316-945-6733. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Kansas Soybean Expo 2020 will be January 8th in Topeka. The Kansas Soybean Association organizes the annual event with checkoff funding from the Kansas Soybean Commission. Thanks to the checkoff, there will be no registration fees again this year. Space is limited, however, so only those who pre-register by December 31 will have guaranteed seats at the luncheon and be eligible for the early bird prize drawing. The event is at the Maynard Conference Center Registration and exhibits open at 8.30 a.m. The program will be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. A reception with association and commission leaders will follow. The opening session will offer checkoff partner updates from the USA Poultry and Egg Export Council and the Animal Agriculture Alliance. Then comedian Leslie Norris Townsend will take the stage. Kansas Secretary of Agriculture Mike Beam will speak at lunch. Following some awards and recognitions, including the 2020 Young Leaders, the association will conduct its annual meeting. Afterward, the Kansas Soybean Yield and Value Contest winners will be announced. Then participants will hear from K-State experts about sudden death syndrome, integrated weed management, and farm finance. Find the full agenda and pre-registration form at kansassoybeans.org slash expo on the web or call 877-KS-SOYBEAN. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Green sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. As we close the book on 2019, all of us at the Kansas Department of Agriculture want to thank all of you across the state of Kansas who make agriculture the state's largest industry, employer, and economic driver. We know that agriculture means hard work done every day of the year by thousands of people involved in agriculture production and in all corners of Kansas. And we are proud to serve you and to advocate for you here in Kansas and throughout the nation and the world. 2019 has been an exciting time for Kansas agriculture. We kicked off the year with a new Secretary of Agriculture, Mike Beam, and he hit the ground running, working with other state and national ag leaders. Spring brought the inaugural year of the Kansas Industrial Hemp Research Program, as licensed farmers planted this new crop for the first time. 
We strive to be the most prepared state in animal disease response, and this year, KDA's animal health staff worked hard with neighboring states to enrich the preparedness plan for African swine fever. And we also continued to support Cattle Trace, a disease traceability pilot project. Historic flooding throughout the spring and summer brought challenges for many farmers and ranchers. And our floodplain management and dam safety teams were kept busy helping communities with response and recovery. August brought the fourth annual Ag Growth Summit, where we celebrated the many successes that have been achieved in Kansas agriculture and committed to action plans toward future growth. Many other issues have kept the KDA team busy this year as well, from water rights to international trade to animal health regulations. At the Kansas Department of Agriculture, we are committed to serving all of Kansas farmers, ranchers, and agribusinesses, and providing an environment that encourages growth throughout the agriculture industry. We look forward to many more opportunities to work together with all of you in 2020 as we share our dedication to Kansas agriculture. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Kansans have a new choice for Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans. With Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans from Kansas Farm Bureau, you have access to four levels of coverage, affordable rates, and service from an organization that served Kansans for more than 100 years. For more information on Kansas Farm Bureau Medicare Supplement Plans, including rates and to apply, visit kfbhealthplans.com. information on your computer or mobile device news and views on grains livestock policy and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter follow AgView news a reliable and relevant source agview.net what if US soybean meal were more than a commodity if seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety that future is here the time is now to meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Members of the Kansas Livestock Association elected wheat and cow-calf producer Harry Mosier as president during the group's annual business meeting December 6th in Wichita. The membership chose Jerry Cuckelman, a cattle feeder from Manhattan, as KLA president-elect. Mosier and Cuckelman will lead the organization during the next year. Mosier and his family own a seed stock and commercial cow-calf enterprise in Marshall and Pottawatomie counties. He is a past chairman of both the KLA Stock Growers Council and KLA Membership Committee. Mosier has served on the KLA Executive Committee and is a member of the KLA Board of Directors. He has represented KLA on the National Cattlemen's Beef Association Board of Directors. Mosier also is a past chairman of the board of the American Simmental Association and previously has served on the Beef Improvement Federation Board of Directors. Cuckelman is the president and chief executive officer of Innovative Livestock Services, which consists of eight feed yards in central Kansas and south central Nebraska and an extensive farming operation. He has held various positions within KLA. Cuckelman currently is a member of the KLA Board of Directors and the KLA Risk Management Services Safety Committee. He served as chairman of the KLA Cattle Feeders Council in 2017 and is a past member of the KLA Executive Committee. He also previously has represented KLA on the NCBA Board of Directors. In addition to his service to KLA and NCBA, he currently is a member of the Livestock and Meat Industry Council. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? 
The Oldie Seed Know to Grow research program has fully tested the latest seed genetics and soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Good morning, I'm Darren Van Vatter with Paragon Ag. The December USDA Supply and Demand Report dropped this week and was fairly neutral for the most part. It sure didn't feel like Christmas morning, but we did avoid lumps of coal. Lately, it seems like the small winds mean a lot. They left domestic corn and bean carryout unchanged while increasing world carryout for both. The lack of production change only feeds speculation and cues up the much anticipated January report. We received friendly news on reduced carryout while seeing a slight increase on the, on the world front. Outside news saw an agreement to forego the implementation of the, the December 15th tariffs, keeping a positive tone on the U.S.-Chinese trade negotiations. Congress made changes to the USMCA agreement and is now in Canada's and Mexico's hands for review. Indicators suggest it will be early next year at best before it's signed. As for the market reaction, corn continues to hang on to support, looking for some positive news to trade. Beans recently came off their lows and are now challenging overhead resistance. We've also seen a nice improvement on the near-month bean basis. Wheat found this month's report positive, but will need more friendly news to build the longer-term case. Livestock has been fairly quiet over the last few weeks. Cattle have held a good portion of their three-month move, while lean hogs are trying to hold previous support. Christmas and the, new, and the year end are fast approaching, and the January report will be right around the corner. Be prepared and have a plan. Questions? Give us a call here at Paragon Ag Advisors, 888-452-8751. I'm Darren Van Vactor. Be safe and have a great week. Well, that's our show this week. Be social with us online, kansasagreport.net. Like us on Facebook, the Kansas Ag Report television show. Follow us on Twitter, the Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers Farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Culture information on your computer or mobile device. News and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter. Follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source. AgView.net. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet.